Hi, in this video we'll be working on differential equations. So it's the same idea of finding our antiderivative, it's just we need to be thinking about more than one variable at the same time. Think about it similar to implicit differentiation. So here are the steps of what we need to do, but best way to talk about them is to do a problem. So let's go to our first one. That's the wrong direction. How about that? So we want to use integration to find the general solution to the differential equation. So our first thing is we want to make sure that we do what's called the separation of variables. So we've got x's on this side, and we really want this dx to be over on that side as well. So we just, easy peasy, multiply both sides by dx. So then we have dy equals 10x to the fourth minus 2x cubed. And then that's all being multiplied by dx. Now that we've done that, we're all set and we can do our integration of both sides. Um, when we work on the one on the left hand side, it's just an antiderivative of dy. So there's an understood one right there. And if we do the antiderivative of one, we get just the variable. Since it's dy, we want to stick a y on it instead of an x like we've done in other ones, because that dx is telling us what variable we're finding the antiderivative with respect to. Um, when we work on the other side, uh, our antiderivative of this is going to be 10x to the fifth over our new exponent, which is 5, minus 2x to the fourth divided by, did I say minus before? Uh, whatever. Divided by our new um, exponent, which is 4. Then, since it is an indefinite integral, we do not know what we're integrating between. Uh, we stick a C on the end of it. All right, so we're doing the same thing again, but I don't have that dy over dx like I've had in the past. Well, hey, guess what? Y prime, that's dy over dx. So there is my dy over dx at that y prime spot. I've got this x and that equals y. Um, now I want to make sure that I have that proper separation of variables. I want to make sure I've got one side that just has um, x's and another side that just has y. So uh, let's get rid of the fraction. That'll just kind of make my life a little bit easier. So multiply both sides by dx. So we get x dy. Ah, oh, dang it, that's not quite right. And then we've got y dx. Ah, oh, dang it, that's also still not quite right. Um, so we need to bring the x's and the y's to their proper spots. Note that I'm not trying to move the dy or the or or the dx this time, because then that, they would end up in the denominator. I can deal with an x in the denominator. Um, I can't deal with a dy in the denominator. I want to just dy, or I want to just dx. I don't want any sort of operations being happening to my dy's and my dx's. So we're going to divide here by x. So this also gets divided by x. And then we also want to bring that y over to the dy. So we're going to divide both sides by y as well. Okay. Um, so now that we've done that, we've got proper separation. We can integrate both sides. Um, now, you might remember, uh, if we do our power rule on this, we get negative 1. And then when we add 1 to negative 1, we get 0. Oh, dang it. That's tough to integrate. Well, don't worry. There was a goofy thing that when we did, took the derivative of it, it got us 1 over a thing. That was ln. So this is the ln of y. Now, there's a goofy thing. There, it turns out to be there. there's an absolute value there, but don't really worry about it. You're not really tested about it. Usually, it shows up in like multiple choice problems. So just don't freak out when there's that absolute value there. Why is there an absolute value there? I don't know. Just put it there, okay? And then remember, we've got to put a plus c. So uh, we got to put it somewhere. So let's just stick it over here. Um, now, we want to try to solve this thing again for y. Um, or, or if they aren't being clear, um, sometimes you might be solving for c. We just want to solve this for y. So I want to get rid of that ln. And the way to get rid of an ln is you make everybody uh, an exponent. Oh, it's all of that stuff to the c. Um, I'm not, not all that e to all that stuff. That's what I want to do. Ugh. Um, so then on this side, we just have the absolute value of y equals, um, this can be broken up. This is e 
to the ln of x multiplied by, because when you're adding your exponents, you're really multiplying those two bases, e to the c. So that's the absolute value of x multiplied by e to the c. e to the c is just going to be some constant. So it's still just a constant. That constant can be kind of a black hole of sorts. Now I want to get rid of that absolute value. To get rid of that absolute value, you got to think, okay, well, what absolute value does is it makes negative things positive and it keeps positive things positive. So it just changes the sign of what we got for our absolute value of x times c. So y is just going to be plus or minus, because it could have been positive, could have been negative, of absolute value of x multiplied by some constant c. And that's done. Solve for y. Finished. Okay, in this one, we want to actually figure out the particular solution that satisfies the initial condition. So we're going to actually get rid of the C when we are done um, using that initial condition we were given. We still want to do that separation of variables. So over here, we've got DU and DV. We've also got a U and a V on the right-hand side. Not cool with that. So we're just going to slide it around. No, we're going to divide this side by U. And then we need to multiply this side by dv. So we get 1 over u equals, uh, let's see, over here we've got v sine of v squared dv. Oh, and I should have a du over there. Er, 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 get rid of that. Loop, 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 du, and then we've got 1 over u. All right, so now it is time to integrate both of these things. So we integrate, integrate. On the left-hand side, we've got the integral of 1 over u du. Well, that's just going to be the ln of the absolute value of u. Don't worry too much about where the absolute value comes from. It comes from the antiderivative stuff. Um, then on the right-hand side, we've got sine of v squared dv. So we need to do a u substitution in order to integrate that. So that u is going to be v squared, and then du is going to be 2v dv. So if we kind of do that substitution in our head and then substitute things back, um, we know we're going to get uh, an extra one-half in front of our thing because we got one half du equals v dv. So we're going to get an extra one half from the u substitution. From our integration, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. And then we're going to substitute back in our u value from that v squared. So that'll be just a v squared. Um, double checking that by taking the derivative of that. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Um, so, uh, yeah, and then, oh, sorry, and then power rule from chain rule um, gets us, uh, chain rule will get rid of that one half and turn it into just a regular V. Okay, but I did that indefinite integral, so I'd also get a plus C, um, one from the other side and one from the other side, but they all just kind of show up over here. Cool, so now we've got all of that. We have an option. We can either solve for u first, or we can um, do that substitution first. I think what I would like to do is I'd like to substitute in that this value here, just so we can figure out what c is really quick. Um, that might make some of our later work a little bit easier. So u of 0, so that is 1 half, oh, here, I want to stick a negative there, cosine of 0 squared plus c equals the ln of the absolute value of 1. Okay, so the ln of 1 is 0 equals negative 1 half. The cosine of 0 is 1, and if we, well, 0 squared is 0, and then the cosine of 0 is 1 plus c. So this means that c is going to equal, um, let's see, that's negative half, bring it to the side, c is one half. Okay.
Now uh, we can bring that C up into this, and then we can actually solve for U, solve for U. Um, so let's rewrite all that so we get the ln of the absolute value of U equals negative one half cosine V squared plus one half. Okay, um, now to get rid of that ln, we bring make it a exponent on an E. So this is E to the ln of U and E to the, all that stuff. Okay, over here we've got the absolute value of U because that E and the ln cancel each other out. Um, then we've got E to the negative one half cosine V squared multiplied by an e to the one half. Where's the s on my cosine? Why don't I have an s on that cosine? Well, that's pretty gross, but whatever. There, cosine of v squared times e to the one half. Now, finally, what we need to do is we deal with that absolute value. So what we did, uh, what we, what you do, what we did, what you do, is u is we put a plus or minus in the front of this thing. So we get e to the negative one half. Let's write our cosine less stupid this time. So cosine of v squared multiplied by e to the one half um, is what we would do normally. But we were actually told about our initial condition. Our initial condition spit out a positive value. If you put in a zero into there, we should get positive one. Um, but with this little plus or minus, we get positive one and negative one. So that's no good. In order to make sure that we meet our initial condition, we actually ignore that thing. If our initial condition had given us a negative value, then we would have chosen the negative in front. But since our initial condition produced a positive value, then we want to make sure that this is choosing the positive choice. And that's it for differential equations. Make sure you are grouping dy with dx. No, wait, sorry. Grouping dy with y and dx with x, and then integrate each side separately. Steps three and four can be done in either order, um, as you've seen um, in some examples. So if you want to solve for one of your variables first, that's fine. If you want to use your cond initial condition first, that's fine. You just need to make sure if you're given an initial condition that uh, you do do that part. Um, oftentimes, you, you will always solve for Y, always solve for Y. And I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.